Well, hello, everybody. Hello. We're back again. Yes, we are. Yes. It's time for a lunchtime chat all about Ed Puzzle. Yeah, I hope everybody has something yummy to eat along or to just get ready for lunchtime, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, do you want to start off with introductions? Yes, let's do that. So I'm Gina Rogers. I'm one of the digital learning consultants at Grant Wood AEA. I'm Beth Swans, another one of the digital learning consultants at Grant Wood. And I am Amber Bridge, a digital learning consultant here with these lovely ladies. And we're here to talk about Edpuzzle. Who doesn't love Ooh. Edpuzzle? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It'd be great to hear in the chat if you are an Edpuzzle user or how you use it or um, what does it look like in your classroom. We'd love to hear from you. Yes, for sure. So make sure that you comment if you're here watching us down in the comment section of the chat here at Facebook Live. Let us know where you're from and let us know how you've been using Edpuzzle or if you have and what questions you have as we are getting started here. I'm sorry, I was a little distracted. I was trying to find the video and repost onto my tim timeline. So doing two things at once. <laughs> Multitasking is always a great thing. Yeah. So um, Edpuzzle, we I love this tool because it does allow teachers to um, add an engagement um, layer onto their videos to make them a little bit more interactive. Um, and then it also just allows you to track kind of student engagement with those videos and apply some checks for understanding along the way to see if your students are understanding the video content that you're having them engage with. Um, and so, as you all have been, um, if you've been following along with us, you've probably heard of our continuous learning document, um, and this kind of falls within phase two. And so phase two is that place where we are um, really trying to get our students to um, or to help build our students' capacity to be online learners and to provide them with some online content to engage with. And we just feel that Edpuzzle is a great tool to do that. I would just say, I would add that if you want to learn more about the phases, yesterday's chat was all about the four phases of our online continuous learning. Um, Amber and I were part of the chat ease. So um, that goes into a lot more detail about what it, this is we're talking about. So it's, uh, it's available for you. Awesome. So again, if you have any questions or you have comments or things that you want us to know along the way, please make sure to put them into the comment box down below and um, below the video on Facebook Live. Um, so do we wanna take a little tour of uh, Edpuzzle? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen today. All right, so um, here we are. I am in Edpuzzle. I have already logged in. One of the things that um, Edpuzzle does allow you to do is log in with Google. And so that's really nice to not have to remember another password. We always love those, um, those tools that allow for that. Um, and so within Edpuzzle, you can um, upload your own videos that you've created. So if you've watched previously our um, Facebook Live on uh, Screencastify and you've been creating some instructional videos for your students, you can upload them in here and add that interactive layer on it. Or you can search into a variety of different video repositories to find content to make interactive. Um, so here we can see just some videos that I've created. Um, there are some videos here that are currently trending in education trending in Iowa, that's an interesting addition here in Edpuzzle, trending in the US. Um, and so if I'm going to search for some content, let's say I'm looking for something on theme because I want to help my students learn about and understand what theme is. Um, I can type in just that uh, quick search theme and then I get a variety of different videos that are already created for me um, around theme. 
And actually this one I've watched previously and I think it's pretty good. So I'm going to grab that one. And what you can do as a teacher is you can preview this video and see how it is um, a lot or how it's set up. And so here, this first video, uh, the teacher or the creator has added a note here that talks about what you're going to be looking for in this video or sets a purpose for why you're viewing it. Um, as a teacher, I can skip that, continue through and continue to watch. If I'm interested in just seeing the interactive elements, they line right here on the bottom. So if I skip to that first one, we can see I've got a multiple choice type of question that I can engage with. Um, if I skip out of that and I'm going to pause that, I can then choose to edit that video, copy, assign, or share that. So um, I might actually create a copy of this because I might want to change some of these questions up a little bit and make it my own. So I'm going to make a copy. So Gina, can I just clarify? So you can use this already created content, but you also have the ability to do whatever you want with this already created content. Like that's a lot of options in one little place. Yep. So once I made that, or once I made that copy, it went into my content, which is right here. And so if I jump into that video, I can start man manipulating and changing these questions. Maybe I eliminate some of them. Like for example, this one, Maybe I decide I don't want that in there so I can delete that out of there. Um, when I'm ready, I can assign that video to a class. And so if I click on that, um, my assign, edit, move to folder buttons will show up here at the bottom. I'll hit assign. And then I will have some classes that I've gone through and previously set up. If I don't have classes here that I've set up, so this is my very first time, I might say add new class. And then I would have my student, or I would type in my class name here. Go ahead and create a class. Hey Gina, as we're working on making a class, do you think it's worth mentioning, kind of talking about how Edpuzzle has responded to COVID? Yes. So um, previously, you used to be able to get, I can't remember how many videos for free, but it was a limited amount. So they have lifted that restriction currently. And so you can get as many videos um, to share with as many classes as you want for free currently. And Amber is going to pump that out in the comments, um, their response to COVID blog. You would just have to fill out a form indicating what school you're from. Um, if you're setting up your Edpuzzle account for the very first time, there's some instructions in that resource as well as to how you request that full um, full plan. Um, for me, like I was just creating a lot of videos for our class that we had to move online for PD and someone from their company actually reached out to me and was like, hey, you're creating a lot of videos. Do you want Edpuzzle for free for your entire um, school? And I said, yes, please. And they just needed an administrator name. Which is really awesome of them to be able to do that in this time because this can be a really useful tool for when students are at home. Yes, for sure. Um, and so you can then assign a date for when you want the kids to finish watching this video and engaging with the questions by. Um, you can set a due date or no due date. So you can start pumping stuff in to the future. Like for example, if I wanna pump out some videos for next week, that start date is where I could change that. And then that due date there, I can set that. Another interesting feature over here as I'm assigning it to class is that I can turn on or off that prevent skipping button. And so what that does is that when the kids come to a question that's embedded within that video, they have to engage with that question. They can't skip like I was doing when I was kind of previewing that video for you. Also what's interesting is there's this turn on closed captioning button. And so I can turn that on and then my videos will be closed captioned for my learners. So I'll go ahead and assign this to my new English 9 class. 
and then it's in that uh, class. Um, if I'm getting my students into English 9 or this class for the very first time, there is an assignment link here that I can share with them directly. Um, otherwise, if they have joined my Edpuzzle class, they can, um, it will show up there for them. There's also classroom integration, so Google Classroom integration, and so you can link together your Google Classroom classes and then also your, um, your Edpuzzle videos. Um, I jumped into- Can you into talk about that one more time? We just had a question pop up. Mm -hmm. And so we have classes and classes and you said there's an integration. Can you talk a little bit more about that? That was a question that popped up in the chat. Like, are these separate classes? Mm, yeah, so what I have over here on the side are some separate different classes that I've set up. Um, since I don't have Google Classroom set up for any of those classes, I've had those students come in by this invite students button. So inside of the class, I went to the students tab, hit invite students, and then shared this link with them. But you can also share videos in Google Classroom as well. And Let's see if I can get one of my Google Classroom classes to show up here. Import a class. And so up here at the top, when I went to add a new class tab, one of those options is import a class. And so I can go into Google Classroom. I'll probably have to just give it permission to access my class list. And then I can grab my demo class, import that in there. And that brings in all of my kids, all of my rosters, right to um, Edpuzzle. Um, Edpuzzle also integrates really nicely with other LMSs. So Canvas, Schoology, um, you can link those together too. And then the Edpuzzle assignments will populate into your Canvas gradebook or your Schoology gradebook as well. So, um, you make this look really easy. Um, I'm impressed with how simply all of it fits together. It makes it a lot less things you have to think about as the, from the teacher end of it. Yeah, if you're pulling content that's already there, that's super, um, super easy to work with. Um, it doesn't take a lot to, to manage or to do. Um, and uploading your own content, I'm going to um, back on out of this. Hey Gina, before we jump into own content, your yep. own content, a question popped up um, is that uh, we they noticed that the videos that you pulled so far are from YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so if YouTube is blocked, mm. is will it run through Edpuzzle? Um gosh, I don't know for sure if it will run through Edpuzzle. I think so, but Amber, do you know? Have you had experience with this? Uh, it's been a while since I've lived in a blocked YouTube world. Makes me sad to hear that there's still a blocked YouTube world out there. Um, I do not remember off the top of my head, so I'll do some background dig in here to see if we can come up with an answer for that then. Yeah, and if any of you that are watching right now have an answer to this question, either you are currently living in a blocked YouTube world and um, are using Edpuzzle, or you have, um, maybe previously had YouTube blocked and was were using um, Edpuzzle, let us know. Um, because I, I think it works, but I'm not 100% sure. There's also some additional channels for content over here on the um, side that are not YouTube. So YouTube is one of the top ones, but Khan Academy, National Geographic, some different TED Talks. And so, so there's some other places to get content um, here as well. And I think also the point you're rolling into about uploading your own content, I did just find an article from Edpuzzle that I'll link in the chat too for people to take a look at. Okay, sounds great. Um, so I will go back to and kind of demo how to bring in your own content. Um, so here on my content, 
Um, if I wanted to upload my own video, and that's what we have here with these different videos that you can see across the top with a black background, I'll go to add content. And then you can create a video right in Edpuzzle, or if you've previously used um, Screencastify and have a video that you'd like to upload, you can upload that. And so you just go in, choose a file. Um, let me see if I can find a video file. This. Oh, that's just a GIF. <laughs> just do this one real quick. Open. And then it will upload. This one's going to take a little while to upload because it's kind of long. But it'll be working on it in the background. Once that video is uploaded in your content, and if you wanted to add that interactive layer on it, I'll go in here to this video. And I'm going to actually duplicate it. And so this is my duplicated video. And that's where I can edit that video then and move to a certain point in the video, let's say like right in here. There we go. Oops, I'm trimming it. Actually, I need to probably switch over to questions. So move to a certain point in the video and add a multiple choice question, an open-ended question, or a note. I can also voice over a video too. So if I find a um, interesting video that doesn't have any background narration to it, but I want to describe what's happening, I can just record my own voiceover over that video. So I'll pause there for a second and see if we've got some other questions or comments in the chat. I have a question. Um, is there a limit to the length of your videos? Uh, is there any kind of parameters for that? Hmm. I haven't run into any length parameters, but the ones that I upload are typically not any longer than 10 minutes because let's be real um most people won't watch a video for longer than 10 minutes and you should definitely try to chunk up instruction into 10 minute blocks um if you do have something that's longer than that with some different like brain breaks or checks for understanding along the way um i guess i did do a video for the um class that we moved online that I think might have been close to 15 minutes or 17 minutes and it it went up fine. Just takes a little while to upload. Yeah, I think your point though, Gina, is spot on. Like we want to keep that way under 10 minutes because one of the parts of Edpuzzle that's awesome is showing all the things that you can do with it, like adding in those questions. And when you add in those questions, that's also going to increase the amount of time that you're engaging with that one video. So even if you had a five minute video and you had like 10 questions or five questions in there, it could bump it up to being a 15 minute process for a student to work through. Yeah, I was just gonna add the same thing. I think that that was really, um, Strong advice to say short and sweet and chunked is really the goal of these videos. It's not a way to do a whole 40 minute lecture with questions added. That's really not what we're encouraging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and if you think about if you did typically do something that was a classroom or a direct um, instruction delivery model in your classroom, um, and you're like, well, usually I did lecture for 45 minutes. There probably was times that you were inviting the kids to answer some sort of questions or having them do some small group discussion um, to make sure that they understood a certain point that you were making or a certain concept that you were introducing. And so those checks for understanding along the way, they just look a little different in Edpuzzle. There are those stops, those questions. Um, and so the amount of time that you're actually talking, delivering content is going to be um, less. 
other questions? So I wondered if you could show the dashboard to see the teeth. I, I think that's some added value to see how mm -hmm. much you can see. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I flipped over here at the top. So my three tabs, content, gradebook, and my classes. I flipped over into my classes and I'm gonna go into this Tate High School PD. And so here I can see my students that are in this class. Um, I can see due assignments. These are the different videos. I can see how many of the students have engaged with the video, turned it in. Um, if I click on one of these videos, so let's go into um, video one, um, I can see exactly the student or the participant um, answers. Now what's really nice too with this, I'm all caught up on my grading currently, but if there are questions to grade, in any of these videos, it will show up right in this area that says there's three questions to be graded or there's five questions to be graded. And so you can see those really quickly and easily. Um, so I'll jump into my first class. And so then I could look at each of my students' progress and see how they did. I can see how they answered the question right there. I can respond to their question as well. Um, I can look at um, each of the videos, the questions in each of the videos um, and how those students engage with those too. So if I click on that, I'm going to see all of those participant answers right there together lumped with the question. And so there's, um, really nice way to just kind of track your students engagement um, with those videos, see how long they have spent in those videos. If I go into my grade book, and this is for my class, I can see how much time these um, participants have spent with these videos. Um, class isn't due yet. And also, um, there's a few of them that are doing it for credit. So um, but we can see here how much time they've spent with the videos that have been assigned to them. I think that's one of the ongoing questions that we get um, for teachers to figure out how do I know that students are actually working on whatever it is I'm asking them to work on. And Edpuzzle adds a really nice way, of one method of seeing that process. Yeah. Um, I know that I was talking with just my husband. He teaches language arts at City High and um, the unit that they are working on now during the social distance or the school closure period is going to be Romeo and Juliet. Um, and there is actually some chunked up clips of the Zeffirelli version of Romeo and Juliet right in there with um, some questions that are embedded in there. And so quickly he can see, okay, did the kids watch it? Um, did they, you know, how did they engage with the, the questions that were provided and get some feel for if they're working through um, that content. One of the articles I was looking at today was talking about how to build engagement online and trust was a huge part of that. And I think that this gives us as a teacher the opportunity to see how much time students are taking. And you can use that two ways. And one of those ways is to be very punitive. And the other way is to be very encouraging. And I think that this really opens the door for those conversations between students and teachers about why might you not be spending time on it and really digging into the reasons um, beyond just, yes, you did it, no, you didn't do it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that you look at kind of that dashboard and see so and so and so and so and so and so haven't even gone into that video yet. And you can then reach out and be like, hey, I'm just wondering how it's going. Is there something that you need to help with? I'm just making sure that you're okay, especially during this time. Um, and so using some of those clues that this might be giving us to as some insight into how students are doing. And also, you know, under having students understand that even though you're not right there with them, you're with them <laughs> and you're, you're watching and you're looking out and you're trying to provide them feedback and respond to their needs um, as quickly as you possibly can in this distanced environment.
I think that makes, I think this is a really powerful tool. We have um, had a lot of teachers use this through our blended and personalized learning. This is, I would say, probably one of the favorites um, and seen it used in many different ways. I think it's really provides a lot of options for the classroom. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's pretty simple to use as well. Um, lots of nice integrations with things that you might already be using. So Google Classroom, um, Canvas, uh, Schoology. Um, I guess I could show quickly like where to integrate into Canvas if that's a question that anyone has. Otherwise, I won't bother. It's it's a little hidden. <laughs> um, if you go into your name here, so next to your profile pic and your name, and then you have to go into your school tab. And so that's where you choose the LMS that you're going to integrate into, which is Canvas. And it will then generate what's called a consumer key and a shared secret. And so <laughs> these are the two things, two pieces of information that you need. This is a crazy secret, as you can see, that Canvas has told us, uh, or that uh, Ed Puzzle has told us, but you'll copy those two pieces of information eventually. And so if I flip into Canvas, and then I'm inside one of my classes, it's called Rigor and Mastery, and I'm in my settings tab in my class. And what I'll do is I'll search for Ed Puzzle, add app, and it will ask me for those two pieces of information, the consumer key and the shared secret. And so I'll copy my consumer key, paste that in there, copy my shared secret, copy that. Shared secret is such a funny term. I know, it makes me laugh every time. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and add the app, and now the app has been installed within my class. And so um, Edpuzzle can push information into Canvas, and Canvas can pull information from Edpuzzle. So, it, and the way that you connect it to any LMS is going to be similar. So if you're using Schoology, you're gonna go in there, you're going to look for your shared um, secret and uh, consumer key, and then look in the place in Schoology where you add your, um, add your apps. Um, any other questions in the chat, Amber? You know, I think we hit some of the biggies about what what do you do if YouTube's blocked and really kind of thinking about classes within Edpuzzle or classes connecting with your LMS. So I think we're kind of quiet out here unless anybody else wants to throw something out. Okay. I did put a link in the chat to the Edpuzzle's um, help desk or help area. We know that's a really strong place to search from. That's where we typically will find some good answers when we get stumped. Um, mm. But Edpuzzle also has um, a certification you can go through if you really like it and really wanna go deep into learning more about it that I'll also add to the chat here to kind of their own personalized PD all, about, all around Edpuzzle. Yes. And one of the carrots for that is if next year um, we're back to normal and you would like to continue using this and they don't have the free unfettered access to it, if you go through their certification program, you do get some additional um, access to video or a number of videos. So, I would also say that I just changed my uh, some things in my settings yesterday. Today I got an email that invited me to webinars of um, Edpuzzle and different LMSs. So they're pretty on top of things too. If you're making changes, they're gonna make sure that you have the help you need as well, which is really nice. Well, I think that we are ready to say that tomorrow, our um, online outreach tomorrow in Facebook Live is all about QuickTime for Mac users. So that will be at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. If you are a Mac user, QuickTime is a pretty amazing built-in tool that you can leverage all kinds of different things. So um, join us to hear more from, let's see, from Jonathan, Wiley, Corey Rogers, and Maggie, oh Pick dear. Pick it. Thank Pick you. It. Just all of a sudden, sorry Maggie, just lost your last name. Yeah. So, and you can make screencasts in um, 
quick time bring them into your ad puzzle yeah bring them right up all Pull it all together all tied with a neat bow <laughs> yes for sure well thanks everyone for your engagement and uh we'll check in with you again tomorrow have a great afternoon bye bye, bye. bye.